okay. screens. Lots of screens. Okay. Screen, you screen. We all screen for screen. For screen. screen screens. Okay. This is the 3.4 inch uh, square 480 by 480 display without touch screen. Um, let's go to the overhead and I can, I can show my demo. I finally got all these demos going. So this is what. These look fantastic in person. We're going to still show them on all the overheads though. So. Yeah. So, but we know we do our best. Okay. Screen through screen through screen. Screen. So this is the version without a touch screen. So you see it's much thinner and it doesn't have a bezel. And this is a version with touch screen. So it's kind of tough to see what's on, but it's got uh, the glass bezel. Um, so it's got more protection. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, and here I'm driving it with the Qualia ESP32 S3. You do need a microcontroller that can, or a microcomputer that can drive these RGB dot clock TTL displays, and most can't. The USB32 S3 is kind of unique in that ability. Um, I have here just doing a color demo, and then uh, this is also a touch screen. So you see, as I touch it with um, capacitive touch, so I touch it with my finger, I'm drawing um, little dots. So this is a 480 by 480 square 3.4 inch diagonal display so it's the first of our set capacitive and non-capacitive okay so next up bar display um two tfts walk into a bar so this is a 3.2 inch 320 by 820 i think bar display um also available both with and without capacitive touch this is without and then if you keep going you know, with without the capacitive touch, you see it's much thinner. And then, the yeah, that one with the bezel with capacitive touch. Yeah. So and this is the other one that has. That's the, that's the last one. Once. Yeah. But so, back to the yeah. So, so there's differences when they. That's a four touch. inch. Yeah. They look slightly different. Okay, so this is the three point two. So this is the bar display. Um, so it's much more rectangular than most, um, but it can be really cool. So I think there's a lot of times where you like you want a very slim display um, with a lot of pixels. So three twenty by eight twenty pixels. Um, so let's go to the overhead and I'll show this one next. Uh, so this is the two versions. This is without the touchscreen overlay. You see there's no circuit here. This is with, uh, so it's got that nice glass bezel. You're going to pay more for capacitive touch, uh, but the without capacitive touch is um, also perfectly fine. Um, and this, this demo is also showing off. This one, you need to be a little closer. Yeah, so showing off. It looks you know, amazing in person, but it's a TFT of a TFT of a TFT. Uh, so this is also capacitive touch, so you see I can uh, touch it with my hands, um, and the little white dots show up over the rainbow. So using a Qualia ESP32 S3 board um, for this, again, you do need to have a microcontroller that is designed to work with um, RGB dot clock TATL displays. Um, you can do like 16-bit color and, and large displays. Um, but we've got example codes and a tutorial for this in Arduino and CircuitPython. And then finally on the display train is the four inch 720 by 720. So this is definitely like as big as it's going to get um, for a number of pixels on these displays. We also have these in um, with and without capacitive overlay. Uh, so this version, you know, happens to be the, the photo we added is the one without capacitive overlay, but the demo I have on the overhead is with so we can go again to the overhead again driving it with a qualia esp32 s3 which is designed to drive these displays it's flickering because it's you know it's a camera taking a photo of a tft um but this one is also a touch screen with capacitive overlay capacitive overlay is going to cost a little bit more but of course it has touch and uh you know it's got a nicer look because there's a bezel to it so you decide whether you want with or without um, capacitive touch bezel, uh, and again, supported both in Arduino and CircuitPython. All right, next up. Okay. Uh, this is our vision. Um, we have our CAN Feather back in stock. It is the, uh, Samy 51 based CAN board, uh, now comes with the terminal block pre-attached, uh, might be in green, might be in blue, might be in black, but even less soldering than ever. It's kind of plug and play ready to go. Uh, so you get, you know, a SAMD 51. Um, that has a CAN peripheral built in. We toss on a, a transceiver, terminal block, uh, and you're ready to do um, CAN communication on a Cortex M4 in Arduino or CircuitPython. Okay, next up. We now have the USB C C version of this kind of like built in monitor cable. So this version has USB C on one side, USB C on the other side, 
Um, and so it's good for, if you want to use this with USB PD, power delivery, it'll tell you the wattage that it got on the other side, which is handy because otherwise, you know, there's no real way to know, like, did the power delivery work? Am I getting that, you know, 100 watts or 50 watts? Because by default, five volts, one amp is only five watts. So if you see, um, like this image, you can see, you know, to get 11 watts, the power delivery must have worked because you're not going to get more than 10 um, unless you have a functional power delivery. So phones, tablets, um, you know, computers like Raspberry Pi, whatever, um, other devices that have uh, power delivery laptops. Um, this will be a very handy cable. It's a very nice quality. And also like you can now tell what is the fastest charger in the house. Um, I use it all the time for when I'm charging, you know, my laptop or my tablet, because, you know, sometimes some of the PD um, power supplies I have don't have the exact voltages that the device wants. This way I don't have to like look at the little text and unplug it. I just plug into one after the other until I'm like, oh, that's the one that gives me 30 watts. Great. I'm done. And Star so tonight besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our customers, our community is? Yay. It's the the zombification of our 2.4 inch TFT Featherwing. Um, this has been like two years out of stock because TFT shortages, chip shortages, um, but it's now back. It's better than ever. I'm so glad to see this. We did the, the TFT shield. Um, it, sometimes it takes a long time to do these big revisions, but I think it's worth it. So if we stop on this image, um, the big changes are we now use the TSC 2007 I squared C resistive touch controller instead of the STMPE SPI uh, touch controller. So that's kind of nice. Um, so now we have one free pin. Uh, we don't. We used to use it as a chip select, but now we're using I squared C, so we don't have to have another GPIO pin used. Um, so we connected it to the IRQ line. So if you want like really fast notifications of touch um, input, you know, alerts, you can just watch that GPIO or use an interrupt. Um, we updated the silk screen, so it looks really nice now using Futura. Um, the reset button is right angle now. And we also added a STEM IQT port. You can see that, that kind of the bottom right area. And uh, I can just, I can show the demo. I mean, the demo is very similar. Yep. But why not? Hold on. Sorry. Plug it in. Okay. So uh, if we go to the overhead. So this can, you work with basically any feather. Um, I've tested it with the 32U4 up to uh, RP2040 and the SAMU51. So anything that uses SPI and I2C in the correct locations will work. Um, you can read images and files off of the micro SD card. Uh, you can use the on off to turn on off. So like, you know, I want to quickly turn off the whole thing. That's kind of nice. This is the reset switch. It's now right angle. So you can see it starts over the program, except my SD card doesn't like it when you cut power in the middle. Um, so this is a demo which uh, draws some flowers off of the SD card. And then uh, there's a resistive touch screen. So resistive makes it inexpensive, but you will have to use something kind of pointy. You can't use your finger pad unless you really press down. Fingernails work best. Um, and then the STEM IQT port is over here for boards that don't have it, like RP2040 does. And then if you want to connect to uh, the backlight to control it by default, that's always on, or the card detect, that's also available. But I know people have been waiting for this redesign for a long time, and I'm kind of psyched that, uh, man, I'm not having... SD card, this SD card really likes to be power cycled. Uh, I'm glad to have it back in stock. And it's back. Yay. Let's see some of the images and more, and just another example of... We don't give up. Dude. Dude, I did, did so many redesigns. And this is a product. New, 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 new. New. 